Good evening, happy Thursday. Welcome to Creations by Julie. I am Julie. Ed is behind the camera, hopefully to catch your comments or any questions you might have throughout the live tonight. Uh, tonight we're going to be making an Easter wreath. And um, before we get started, let me make sure we're actually on. And I think Ed's gonna see, make sure he can pull it up so he can follow the comments. And it looks like, oh, I forgot to turn my phone down. It looks like we are on. Say hi when you come on. I see maybe two people. Well, one of them's probably it. <laughs> the other one may be me. Who knows? But um, anyway, it's good to have you. I hope you're staying warm today. It's actually very cold here in Texas. For Texas, it's about 40 right now, which for us is cold. So, uh, but I hopefully won't be sweating like I was last Monday. So it's kind of like, you know, they say the Texas weather, if you don't like it, hang on 15 minutes, it'll change. So we went from like 80 to 40. So, but anyway, that's crazy. But um, say hi and I can see it. <laughs> it's having problems with his new phone. He's just a swiping. <laughs> so... Hopefully, he'll be able to find us. Um, first, let me go over our blessing bag. Um, I love to give things away, and for the month of February, I chose just to do one big giveaway, and it is going to be a kit, a sunflower kit. And it's from Unique in the Creek. This is the way I got it, and sending it straight to you. You're going to get one of their large uh, sunflower boards. And um, you're going to get two rows of yellow, one row of green. You get a center for your sunflower, all the zip ties that you need. There's a cute little ladybug. There's clippers to cut your zip ties. And I think there's two clips. I'm not sure. But um, anyway, to be eligible for this, all you have to do is do hashtag sunflower kit in the comments on my live. If you're watching the replay, uh, that's great too. You still qualify to receive the kit. Just put hashtag sunflower kit. I will go through and pick all those names out, put them in a blessing bag, and we will actually be drawing next Thursday because it will be my first live in March. Um, and then we'll start all over with something new for the month of March. But that's what it is for February. Um, real simple, just comment hashtag Sunflower kit. Ed, have you not found it yet? All right, Brenda's on. Two Brendas. Karen Hunter, Kathy Keller. <laughs> you want to just use mine? You want me to find it? What? Okay, let's see. I think you might have got on too quick, maybe. Uh, usually it It'd doesn't. It'd be the only thing I've ever done too quick. I won't comment. I'm that. slow. <laughs> okay, let's go back here. And if I can't find it, we'll just get out of Facebook. Donna Smith says, Love you for God to love the world picture. Thank you. I can't wait to um, get that. I think, um, oh no, that was an hour ago. I started to say, Carrie is on live. Sorry, y'all. This will just take a second. There it is. I don't what was wrong with it? You you probably were in it before you hit the live button, and you you won't see it like that. You have to. Well, wait I don't have I don't have a Facebook, so he stops mine, y'all. Okay, so let's get started with our wreath tonight. Now I'm actually going to work from a different angle so that y'all can see better. Um, I have the base made. But I'm going to show you from the start of how to put the pipe cleaners on. Now, I will tell you, this is the way I like to do it. There are a lot of different ways to put your pipe cleaners. Or you can use what they call a wreath form. A wreath form is raised a little higher than these wire forms from Dollar Tree. But um, they have the, you can get the pencil wreath forms, which are the thin, fuzzy-like ties. Or you can get the regular wreath forms where the ties are pretty thick. They're already attached to the form. I just 
like the Dollar Tree form because I can put put them where I want to put them. So I'm going to show you um, a, a way to get started on that. Kathy Taylor said Kara's almost done. So she oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I saw where it was about an hour ago that she was on. Okay, this is the sign we're going to use tonight. I put the length at the top. You can get the mesh that I'm using tonight and the sign at Craft Outlet. I looked today, they are both still in stock. I believe the sign is 550 and the mesh is about 750 and you only need one row if you do it the way I do it. Okay, so this is a wreath form from the Dollar Tree, a dollar. You're going, I like to do even, inside and out. So I put six on the inside, 12 on the outside. So you're just going to take pipe cleaners that are uh, the color of, you know, that coordinates with your mesh. So I'm using a natural looking mesh tonight. So take your pipe cleaner and this is bar one, two, three, and four. Start at the inner bar and I, at each, you've got six different sections. So the crossbar is where I start and I just go through it and attach my pipe cleaner. Now I like to take it and twist it one time and then to kind of keep it from flopping and moving, I just put it underneath this first bar and back over. That just secures it. You're going to do that on every one of them. Okay, I'm just gonna do a couple of them here. Brenda Shuri said Tuesday it was minus 30 there. Oh my goodness. I, I couldn't handle that. Now, I love cold and I love snow, but mm -mm. so you've got six on each one, okay? Then you're gonna come on the bottom part and I like to go to the second ring. Well, it depends on which way you're counting it. One, two, actually the third, if you go from the inside out. And I'm going up and under that in the, between these two, three and four, and then come up between two and three. The, you know, to where you can, that kind of holds it. Get it as close, it doesn't have to be exact to being in the center, uh, but get it close. And then you're gonna go all the way around and do so that you've got one here, one right underneath it. But I like to use this third ring here. Okay, and then I'm gonna attach like that. Once you get all those done so that you've got six here and you've got six on each post, I go back and go in the center right here on those bottom two rings. And I like to put my twist on this ring where it leaves this one open. And then I just take it and I twist it around. Now, if you have time and if you want to, so I would put like one here. So in each section, you've got like these two here and just one here in the middle. So then I would go over here, the same thing, and put one in the center here. Well, you can do it, those two or these two. I started doing it these two, so let's do here. But I wanted to end up on that second where my twist is kind of, so when I put my mesh in, they're all kind of the same. Now you could take your glue gun and put a little bit of glue here and here if you want to. You don't have to, but you don't want that sliding a lot. So a lot of times I go ahead and fix up my uh, frame, put a little bit of glue on each side. You don't have to do these, because see, these aren't moving. Just the ones that you put here, and you're gonna put six of these. So you've got one here, one here, one here, one in the middle, one in the middle, one in the middle, okay? Just put a little bit of glue on those. Okay, and then you just go all the way around. So let's talk mesh for a second. Second, This is the mesh I'm gonna to use tonight. You can see I marked most of my stuff. I got this at Craft Outlet. It was about $7.75 when I bought it. It's called fabric mesh. I like it because it's soft. Um, and I decided to go with just a neutral color, no other colors in it. Now, this is 10 yards. So I have 18 ties on my frame. So I would just divide 18 into 360. Brenda says, so you don't put one in center and then two on the bottom? I don't. Some people do, 
This is just the way I like to do it, so that I've got 18 total ties. And I like it where I have 12 on the bottom, an even number, that way it's real easy for me to do just every other one if I want to do something extra there. I put six in the middle, 12 on the outside. Some people put one in the middle and then two here. I mean, it's still three in each section. This is just the way I like to do it. Okay, so this is fabric mesh, and you can't tell, but it's just a lot softer to work with, and it's just, it doesn't stick real bad on the edges and hang on things. But if you divide, I want to have 18, uh, not rows of it, pieces of it. So if I divide 18 into 360, which is, that's the inches, that should be on a row, if it's a 10 yards, then that means 20 inches. So I'm gonna cut 20 inches, but, I got my thing turned around wrong. I'll just do it from the floor. I like to cut this with the rotary cutter. You can cut it with scissors, but it will fray more. Uh, you can invest in a rotary cutter and it makes it very simple. I don't go the whole 20 inches simply for the fact sometimes you're shorted just a little bit on the row and you don't want to end up with just 17 pieces. So what I do is I go about 19 and a half. So instead of doing four, I'm going to do like four and a half. And I'm saying that because this is 24 my one is down here. I could turn it around. But anyway, let me cut a couple of these. See, I can turn it around, I guess. And that way I'm going from the one to about the 19. And I'm only gonna do a couple of these because I've already got, y'all know me, I like to get done. I've already got the base done, but I'm gonna show you how I did my ruffles. All right, you said hi. Hey, Paula. Paula sent me a picture of a cross she did today and it looked really pretty. Okay, so now I'm just gonna show you, you would cut the whole row to do this one wreath. Um, and you should have plenty if you don't go quite to the 20 inches, okay? Y'all know me, you know I, my favorite pedal or, it's not called a pedal, what's it called? Um, my method is the ruffle. Now, see these were at the front, see how these lay down flat, but as you get to the end of the roll, you're gonna have those that stay rolled up like this. And what I like to do, let me grab up this clip. Paula said she uses a rotary cutter a lot. Yeah. And Pat Powers is on here. Hey Pat. Okay, especially when you get to the end of the row, and, and I cut all my mesh at one time. That way, when I get ready to start my, you could cut just six and do the inside and then do 12 on the outside, whatever you want to do. But it really helps if you kind of fold your mesh down, maybe an inch, to get that cut edge. Melanie Dow says hi. Hi, Melanie. Okay, you just fold it down just a little bit on each end. Then I do my ruffle right up the middle. And you're just pulling that material towards you. And you're kind of making like a bow tie. Donna Snell says rotary cutter is your friend. Yeah. I think I've got about six of them. Okay. So then it doesn't matter if you do the top or the bottom first. You're going to open your pipe cleaner, put your ruffle in, and give it about three twists. Tighten it tight. One, two, and do about three twists. And I just usually take them and put them to the inside. Okay, then take your other piece, fold the end down just a little bit, and what you're doing is just putting that cut edge on the bottom. Clip it with anything, put scissors on top of it, whatever you need to do. Fold this end up a little bit. We went over this last year when we talked about all the different methods. This is called the ruffle, and it's just my favorite. So then I'm gonna, Put it in this one. So, so far I've got two pieces of mesh in this one section. The next one I'll put down here and show you. I normally go all the way around though. I, I put the mesh 
Sometimes I start on the outside, sometimes I start on the inside, doesn't matter, but I do all six of them. Then I start at the bottom with these. Rotor, rotor, rotor cutters getting lots of votes. Yeah, the rotary. Yeah. Yeah, you can get them. Um, Hobby Lobby puts them on sale about every other week with their scissors and stuff. And just keep a sharp blade in it. Uh, some fabric mesh you can actually cut with the wood burner. Okay, but this I didn't. All right, so you're just going to, you're going to do 18 pieces like this. And then put this one down here. And then you would just keep going. That's the only pieces I cut, but you would put it there. Then you'd put one here, and then you'd put one here, and keep going all the way around. Okay, that's your base. All right, I already have my base done. This is what it's going to look like when you're done. This is the same mesh, and this is six on the inside and 12 on the outside, okay? This would be a great base for just about any wreath or sign because it's such a neutral color. Um, I liked it because my sign has this brown in it, and I, the sign is gonna be the main thing, and I don't want anything to take away from my sign. So this is our base. You can't see through it. That's what it looks like on the other side. A little fuzz. Okay. Now, for this particular one, the next thing I want to do is put my sign on. All I did to get the sign ready was staple two pipe cleaners, one on each end, and then I put a little hot glue on it. I did that yesterday. Uh, that way I know they're not going to come out. Now, when you staple... You want to make sure that your stapler does not go through to the other side. So, what were they, about quarter inch? Yeah, that was a T50. Like anybody knows what a T50 is. This was the type of staple gun that installers used to use when they put the wire around your baseboard because it would raise up a little bit and go over the wire. So, these are raised staples that I ran the pipe cleaner through. But you can use a regular flat staple gun. You don't want your staples any longer than I would say fourth of an inch. Put pretty normal size, right? All right, so I'm going to, you can do this any, this where your creativity comes in. If you want to put the sign in the center, you definitely can do that, but I made a bow. So I want my sign to be down a little bit because I'm going to put a bow right here. And I'm going to go ahead and put my sign on because I'm not sure with my ribbons that I'm going to use every pipe cleaner in the center. So I'm just taking my pipe cleaners and you want it kind of set up on your um, mesh just a little bit. So I'm just going to get it through some of the mesh you, and you want to attach it to the wire frame. And you want to make sure that you're like between the wires. Like, see, I came through, and I've got one on one side of this wire and one on the other. And I'm not going to tighten it real tight right now. I'm just going to get it on there. Because I want to come through on this side, and you want to make sure it's even. And I'm going to go through. You don't want it so tight that it's pushing down into your wreath, but you want it tight enough. All right, see, that, that can't be even because it's not even on my ring, so let's do this. Although I do want it down. So. But you want to make sure you attach it. Any sign you put on, attach it to the frame itself. Don't just attach it to the pipe cleaners or the mesh. See, I have a couple of pipe cleaners down here that I going to pull out a little bit. Then there's one there. There's one here. There's one here. And there's probably one right there. Which I may not use those two. I may use these two. Okay, so I'm just going to attach it here. Okay, so 
there's my sign. Now I'm going to kind of pull these up a little and get this maybe to come up a little. I want my sign to be my main focus, but yet you don't, you don't want it like sticking way up. When the bracket says rain and snow on Sunday. Ooh. Well, we're supposed to be dreary and cold all week. But no snow. Maybe rain. Okay. Now I can always go back and tighten that later once I get my ribbons on. Now, I have went ahead and picked out the ribbons I wanted. And I'm only using two. And I've already cut them so that y'all don't have to sit here and watch me cut. Karen. And I went ahead and did 18. Yeah. Karen Marie said hello to Lily. Hey, Carrie. I missed your live a while ago. I saw it by the time I went on, but I'll go back and watch. Um, so I pick, I chose these two. Kind of simple, but I, to bring out this purple. They're both one and a half inch. I cut them at 13 inches. And I went ahead and cut 18 because remember I have 18 ties. Now, I may not use all 18, but I won't know that until I get the ones on the outside I know will be every tie. On the inside, I may just do these two and maybe these two. I, I may not, I'll just have to see what it looks like. I may use these two and I may not because they're kind of hid up and under there, but it just depends on what it looks like when I get the others on. So we're, to do that, I've already got them cut and folded. So I'm just gonna lay them down. Now when they're the same size like this, I kind of put one, I don't put them right on top of each other, kind of raise one of them up a little bit and just push it right in the middle. Take your hands and kind of fold them a little bit. And I'm gonna start on the bottom because I know I'm, they're gonna go in every tie on the bottom. And that's all I'm gonna do right now. I'm not cutting those ties off. I'm just gonna go around and put my ribbons. You don't wanna miss a tie. So I know I should have 12. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. That way I can answer questions or talk to y'all and I'll know if I've skipped one. Thank you for sharing, Carrie. Okay, now I have a choice. I can keep this one on top or I can reverse them. And I think I will reverse every other one. So this one, it'll be the purple one more on top. And like I said, they're at 13 inches. I was gonna tell you too, if you cut a lot of ribbon ties, like this one I had to do 18, I use, it's called the Buddy, what's it called, the Buddy something. Oh my gosh, it's from Unique in the Creek and Measure Buddy, that's what it's called. And what it is, it's a really neat contraption that measures your ribbon very easily for you. You can pull up this part and see it says there, that would be 10 inches from here to here. So I did 13, so I go up to the 13. If you pull out the bottom, you can go all the way to 20 inches there. So you then you wrap your ribbon around it. But I wanted 13, so what I did is I just put it on the 13, hooked my ribbon right here, and then just wrapped 18 times. And it's even got an indention where you cut it it, it's very easy rather than sitting here and measuring out each ribbon. But Unique in the Creek sells those, but they're called the Measure Buddy. It's not something you have to have, it's just something that's nice to have. Makes it fast. Yeah. And there's a lot of different things that kind of help you measure. And I could have went and done this and had them all on here, but I just wanted y'all to see exactly what I was doing. There's just only so much that you do ahead of time. And I, you know, I'll, I'll constantly be going back and fixing ribbons, but for now, let's, we'll just keep it going. Do y'all have any questions about 
the mesh or the ribbons. I kept the ribbons pretty simple. Donna Rogers says hello. Hi, Do with Donna. Darren, D A R. Darren. I'm so glad to see y'all on on this cold Thursday. And y'all don't forget, hashtag sunflower kit to put your name in the blessing bag. One more week and we will be drawing. And see, Brenda, I made Brenda just, back and says, I used a piece of cardboard wrapped in duct tape. Yep. Hey, it worked. Yep. And that's what I kind of started out at. Ed, I believe, even cut me some, some wooden um, boards or something. Yeah, frame. And made me a thing that, where you could put the dowels in it and wrap it around. But honestly, sometimes I get to working and I just use the mat and just... Especially if I don't have to cut a bunch. Now with this, I had to cut 18 of each, so I did drag out the measure, buddy. Several people are putting down hashtag sunflower kit. Good. I'm glad y'all like that kit, and I will even give you the link to where uh, Lori made one live, so you can go watch and get have the instructions. And I just got my new order yesterday, I believe, from Magnolia. And um, so I got more, I got some more of the pillows. I'm gonna be doing a pillow with the Amazing Grace pretty soon. Or I may do the old rugged cross on the one. But I'm gonna offer those as kits in my store with a pillow covering in the stencil. Okay. You just sometimes it's hard to see the the pipe cleaners, but and like I said, they, they're not perfect yet. I do that when I'm all done. And I'm just alternating. One time I'm putting the stripe on the top, the next one I'm putting, but I am putting it in every one. Because I have some tulips I'm gonna add. Probably just every other one. Okay, only a couple more. Then we'll decide for sure if, if we think it needs it. But I'll probably put my bow on and then figure out if it needs more ribbon. I just, I don't want to take away from the sign. So see, you don't have to use the two and a half inch ribbon for tails. You can use both uh, one and a half inch. All right, this is the last one on the bottom. And I know I didn't mess up because it worked out the way it's supposed to. So the solid one will go on top for this one. Then I think I'll put my bow on in the side. And I went ahead and made the bow. Um, I made it with the same ribbons. Oh, that ribbon needs to be turned. This purple's kind of hard to tell. And I'll, I'll fool with getting those perfect later. Okay. So I have to make sure I get, here's the bow that I made. And it's just, uh, I used the same ribbon, only wider. And I did four loops. Then I added this ribbon and did four loops, two on each side. Then this ribbon, I did one loop, and then this ribbon, I went and did two loops on each side. I didn't want a huge bow, bow. and I think the bow is going to go to get in the center right about right there where that other tie is at. And I didn't make very long tails because I didn't want it hanging down that much. Let me play with it a second here. And there again, you got to go through the mesh and figure out where you want the bow because you don't want it down in the wreath.
but I want my tails going this way. But I don't really want them covering my sign, so let's see if that's a good spot. And I'm just going to kind of test it first. Gillies, Marie said she's going to drive home and catch the replay. Be careful. Yeah, especially if the snow and weather. How long is it going to take you to get home? I think it takes her hours. Okay, there again. Y'all know I like to hang up my wreaths and check everything. I think this the size of this bow is going to be fine. Um, That's for the inside. So, I will do all the fluffing and all that stuff later. Let me see. To make sure, I'm pretty sure that's the center. That's the tails coming out there. So I know I'm not gonna be putting anything else in that particular one. So I am gonna go ahead and twist tie where these tails are right here and cut that tie off. I'm not gonna be using it anymore because that's right where my bow is. I don't want anything but those tails there. Okay, now I still have here for the inside and here. And here and here. I know I'm gonna put them here. So let me add those two. See, when you work with it, then the, the tails get all messed up, but that's okay. Okay, so I'm gonna put one here. And then I'm gonna tie these off because I'm gonna add tulips, but I, I'm only, well, no, maybe I'll wait, make sure. Because once you cut them off, well, I don't need them for the tulips anyway. So I am going to go ahead and twist them about five times, cut them off, fold it over, put it in there. Okay. And let's see, this one I'm going to reverse. The purple solid on top. And I always, before I even cut all my ribbon, I cut maybe two sets and put them in the wreath to make sure it's the length that I want them. But I very seldom ever, because my wreaths are not, you know, seven and eight inches high like monkeys are. Um, I very seldom ever go longer than 13 inches. I usually do 12 or 13 because with the ruffle, that's plenty. Okay, so let's see. What we have to decide is if we're gonna, if we think it needs any more here and here. I think you got it on purpose. <laughs> you just kind of want it to look uniform. Let's see. We're gonna, I can always take it out. That's gonna be way under there. That, let's see. This is gonna go under the sign a little bit. And you can usually tell more once you just get the ribbon sticking out. So I'm gonna put that under there. I probably will not use that one. Let me put one over here. Cause I think with that bow there, that's, that's all it needs. Okay. And this one I'm gonna put with the stripe on top. On this side of the sign. 
and I'm trying to get it like all the way down in there where that twist tie was. And fold it under. That means I actually put four on the center. Two at the bottom and two at the top. And I'll play with those and get them where I want them. So I'm not gonna put one here. So I'm gonna close that, twist it good. Make sure I'm twisting the right way. Have y'all ever gone to twist it and actually undo it. Okay. So I'm not going to use that one. I'm going to just fold it back under there so my bow will lay down. And then I'm not going to use the one on this side. Where is it at? Right there. Can y'all see okay from this angle? I know when I'm working over here to the side, you probably can't, but. Deborah says it's beautiful. I may clip the tails, and then I may just kind of let them curl under a little bit right there. I just don't want any of the sign hid. Okay, so that's what we have so far. Okay, that's pretty like that, but I have these purple tulips left over from the tulip wreath that I made a week or so ago, and I think I want to put at like every other one just, just around the bottom. Let me see. Paul Rakey said I can see better when you stand on the side. Good. Brenda Backman wants to know if you use the Easy Bow Maker. I did. It? I used the Easy Bow Maker. And I did five inch for the first loop and then went down to four and a half and then four and then three and a half. And I did two, two big loops on each side, then two loops, then one loop, and then two loops. Donna okay. Smith says it's beautiful as is. In I other have words, she agrees with me. You don't have to <laughs> add the tulips. I, I am going to add the tulips to every other one, though. All right, if I do that one, i got to make sure I come out to the right. If I do that one, skip that one, do this one, skip this one, do this one, skip this one, do this one, skip this one, do this one. Skip that one. Okay, I thought I would have one more. One, two, three, four. That's just five. Okay. One, skip. That one, skip. That one, skip. That one, skip. Skip and that one and skip. Okay, well, I'm just going to do five. And I think that just adds a little bit of touch. I don't think I'm going to um, try to put two loops in this. You know, I may, once I hang it, y'all know what I do. I hang it out in the utility room. Turn around, Susan. I hang it out in the utility room for a couple of days and look at it. And then I may decide to go back and add in all four of these. I just, I don't want so much, but we'll see. For, for tonight, I'm just gonna do like I've got them, every other one. So I'm gonna go ahead and go in here and twist these, but I'm not gonna put a flower and cut them. Cut that one. I'm not going to put a flower. 
flower in this one. And with this particular one, I don't want you to see the pipe cleaners. So that's why I'm, you know, cutting them off pretty close down there. I do it about five times. So you can see I'm, I'm cutting off about this much. Oh, those little bells, those are so pretty. Thank you. I love the purple. I usually sell, I, I make one of these every year and I always sell it but I don't ever try to do it exactly the same. I think last year, the one I made was on a grapevine with, it, with the purple tulips. I think it was too. Yeah. But it's one of my favorite signs because I just, I just love the color purple with it. Okay. And it really does not take long. Um, if you do your prep one day, like cut your mesh, fix your wreath frame, your tie wraps, not your tie wraps, your pipe cleaners, get them in your frame, cut your mesh, and then maybe the next day, cut and do your tails, and then when you go to put it together, it does not take long to actually put it together. go back and I've got two choices I can just stick the flower down in there or I can give it some glue and use the top use the pipe cleaners to make sure it doesn't come out and that's probably what I'm going to do so let me get this mess out of the way for trash and get my glue gun over here a little closer to me. The extension all reach. Mm -hmm. it's, it's fairly long. Brenda says it's beautiful. Donna says it's nice. And Karen Hunter says love it. Thank y'all. I, I just, I love purple. And what I'm going to do is just put glue. These are some of the tulips, y'all. And the reason I left the greenery on there and had to cut off the stem. I might would have just pulled this off, but if you can see, it's not coming off because when I do my tulip wreaths, and it takes time, but I, to me it's just worth it. I hold the stems when I get them and I pull on every petal. And if it comes off in my hand, it's glued on. And then I glue this part to the stick. So this is not coming loose, so I had to just cut the stick because these are just extras from the uh, tulip wreath. I don't want my customers to get their tulip wreath and a petal or two has fallen off in the box. Brenda Bracken says green goes with your sign. It does. So, and this takes just a little bit of extra but it also means that those tulips are in there with both glue and the pipe cleaner but i don't want to see the pipe cleaner okay let me start back at this one this will take just a few minutes y'all and then we'll be through with it i'm just going to put plenty of glue on both sides because whether I get it into the mesh or on the ribbon, it's gonna stick. This mesh allows you to do glue very easily. And then I'm just gonna twist the pipe cleaner kind of between the, I'll show you in a minute where I'm going between the, the flowers. Okay, so what I'm doing, I'm putting glue all the way up. I'm pushing the, this greenery up as far as it'll go, and then I'm putting glue all the way. Then I'm bringing the pipe cleaner and like kind of going between those three flowers so that it's also 
on there with the pipe cleaner. You can't see the pipe cleaner once you wrap it a couple of times and cut it off. And I will walk past it several times tomorrow and then decide if I think it has plenty of flowers. According to Ed, it does. <laughs> of course, then he'll go back after I've made a decision to change things and he'll be like, oh yeah, that, that does look good. Hey, I know who cooks my groceries. had my glue skillet, I could have used it, but I didn't bring it in here. I think that's it. That one is already done. So that's it. And then you just go through and adjust your ribbons. See, it's hard for me to tell with it laying down on the table. There's glitter. I didn't use a single thing glitter. Okay. There we go. Can you see it? And like I said, I'll take it. Notice I did not, and I will go and once I'm sure that's where I want my signs, I will twist these, cut them off, and wrap them around. The same with the bow. There's where my bow is. You've got this whole thing here to hang it anywhere on your door, and I just squished my bow. But I will hang it outside and then evaluate what it, else it needs or if, or if I decide I want to take those those ribbons out but I don't think I do I may just spread them out a little bit if I take any out it would be this one and this one because you've got so much ribbon up here in the bow but we'll see and that's it so there we have it for tonight. Um, you could do this with, you know, the same way with any sign that you find in Hobby Lobby or, you know, anywhere else. But like I said, I do know right now Craft Outlet does have this sign and they have this mesh. The mesh was called Fabric Mesh and it's just a beige solid color. So... I appreciate y'all being here. Don't forget to put hashtag sunflower kit. We will be drawing next Thursday. And then March, we're going to be doing something different. I, I don't know. I'm thinking about maybe um, I have a lot of Easter stuff. Um, so I'm thinking about maybe doing a, a giveaway every live in March. But we'll see. Um, but anyway, for Thursday, that's it. Thank y'all for joining me, and um, I'll watch for the wreath. I'll post when I finally decide how to keep it and what I'm going to do. So um, just watch for it, and I 
I will see y'all Monday night at 6. I think we're going to do, um, I have a magnolia stencil that says he is risen. And I think that's what I'm going to do Monday night. Um, and I think I'm just going to do it in a classic black and white and put a black cross with it that I have. Um, so that's what we're going to do Monday, I think. But I will see y'all Monday at 6 o'clock. Y'all have a safe and happy weekend and be careful. Bye, y'all.